So the givens that we should have for both page 623 and the question uh, include those things I've listed there. Now keep in mind, this is a satellite that's in orbit. And because of that, if this is the moon, the satellite is some distance above the moon. And it's going to orbit in a circular motion, circular orbit around the moon. And so if we're considering the height of its orbit, so here's the height of its orbit. And we're also considering the radius of the moon, the radius of the moon, the total distance between their centers, which is the R that we're interested in here, is actually the radius of the moon plus the height. Don't miss that. Yesterday, again, as I said before, we were at the surface of Earth, taking off from the surface of Earth. So the distance between their centers was just the radius of the planet. Now we're orbiting some distance above the planet. It's both the radius plus the height combined. So when we get that, so the radius of the moon plus the height, what you should end up with is a value of 1.994 times 10 to the 6 meters. And so those are our givens for this question. And now we'll go ahead and actually start solving some things. The first thing we want to know is the kinetic energy of the spacecraft. Well, we know that the kinetic energy is equal to GMM over 2R. And then it's a matter of just subbing those values in and getting our answer. The mass of the moon is the capital M. So that's 7.36 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. And then we have the mass of the actual satellite, 4,025 kilograms. We divide all of that by two times the radius, which we I explained earlier how to find that. It's not just the radius of the moon. It's the distance between their centers. And what we should arrive at is a kinetic energy of 4.9569 times 10 to the 9 joules. Technically, this is 4.96 times 10 to the 9 joules, but I'm keeping two extra sig digs for a future calculation. And you can actually store that in your calculator and it'll give you even more accuracy for that future calculation. But this is the answer for the kinetic energy. I'm going to uh, give a therefore statement at the end when I've done the whole question. Part B then says the total orbital energy of the spacecraft. Well, how do we find the orbital energy of the spacecraft? I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit so we can have a little bit more room. The orbital energy of the spacecraft is the total energy. Right? Total, total orbital energy is E total. Well, what is E total? Well, we derive that above. We know that total energy is the negative of the kinetic energy. In other words, the total energy is negative 4.96 times 10 to the 9 joules. So if you want a rationale for why that answer is what it is, go back to where we derived the total energy and you'll see. Part C asks us for the total, uh, for the binding energy. Now, again, we derived the binding energy. We defined it and derived it. And the binding energy is the energy that keeps that satellite from going completely outside of Earth's gravitational pull. And the binding energy we found to be equal to the negative of the total energy or equal to the kinetic energy. And so, again, we have 4.96 times 10 to the 9 joules, and it's positive in this case. So that's all been pretty straightforward so far, hopefully. The last thing is where we have to do a little bit more calculation because now this is asking us for our speed. How much speed is required to completely escape the gravitational pull of Earth? Well, we know that for escape speed, it has to have some kinetic energy. And so the escape speed that it's going to have to have is based on the kinetic energy it previously had plus the binding energy that was keeping it to the planet. So you put the binding energy, you add that to the kinetic energy, and what you're going to get is enough energy, kinetic energy, to actually escape. In other words, we're going to have to speed up by this much kinetic energy. We're going to have to gain this in EK to be completely free from the gravitational um, 
gravitational attraction of Earth. And so what we can do here is we can recognize that the uh, kinetic energy to get three is really just those two numbers are the same. So it's two times 4.9569 times 10 to the nine, which gives me 9.9138 times 10 to the nine joules. So that's the amount of kinetic energy that I need to actually get free. Well, we know that kinetic energy is equal to one half mv prime squared. And that's because how, how fast am I going to need to go at the end? Uh, how much, how, how fast total am I going to need to get free? That's not asking how much faster than I was traveling. That would be a different question that might push you a little bit to think this a little deeper. But it's simply asking us how fast is it going to go to get free, period. And so what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange this by multiplying both sides by 2, dividing both sides by m. And I'm going to get 2 ek primes over m. And then that gives me v prime squared. Take the square root of both sides, and I get v prime. I put those numbers in. I put those numbers in, and I get this. I have the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy was 4.9. Uh, 9569 times 10 to the 9 joules. I'm going to divide that by the mass of the satellite of 4,025 kilograms. And I'm arriving at a velocity that I would need to completely escape Earth's pull of 2.22 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. And so what that would mean, now I can conclude, I can see therefore... The kinetic energy in orbit was 4.96 times 10 to the 9 joules. The total orbital energy was negative of that. The binding energy was positive of that. And let's be specific. It's the binding energy when it was in orbit. 4.96 times 10 to the 9. And the speed required for escape was what we just found. 2.22 times 10 to to the three meters per second. To put that in perspective, it's 2,220 meters per second to completely escape the pull of Earth, or of the moon in this case. Now you might be thinking back to what we saw yesterday, and if we are in low Earth orbit, this is a little higher than low Earth orbit, but if we are in low Earth orbit, we had to travel at 28,000 kilometers per hour to stay in low Earth orbit. But are we dealing with Earth here? No, we're dealing with the moon. The moon's gravitational pull is much, much less. And in fact, um, you would have to be traveling far slower if you were in low moon orbit than if you were in low Earth orbit. Far slower even than 2,200 um, meters per second.